This is David Falco. David is a skycap, working full time at Reagan National Airport. How much do you think David makes? Take a wild guess. Three dollars and seventy-seven cents an hour. Three dollars and seventy-seven cents an hour. How the heck? How the f is that possible? We'll stick around to find out. If you've broken out into a rage sweat, that's good. Because that means you're asking yourself, how on earth does a company get away with paying a grown ass man with a family $3.77 an hour? The answer is easy. It's called subcontracting. Over the last few decades, the major airlines started offloading support staff from their payroll, then using outside contractors to hire workers to do the same type of job. We're talking about everyone from the sky caps and baggage handlers to airplane cabin cleaners, security officers, and even wheelchair attendants. People who once had good paying jobs with unions, vacations, and benefits are now part of a race to the bottom, living below the poverty line without benefits, pensions, or even sick days. Also, the airlines can save a buck and rake in even more in profits. Now, not everyone we're talking about is making $3.77 an hour, plus tips. Did you know you were supposed to tip them? Whether they get tips or not, the vast majority of these workers are still struggling. Look, these jobs used to pay $19 an hour, and now they average about $10.60. Think about trying to raise a family on $10.60 an hour. It's damn near impossible. So it's no wonder that one third of these workers are in or near poverty. Or that many rely on food stamps and subsidized housing. In fact, some of these airport workers are even homeless. Let that sink in. Working full time and living in a homeless shelter or out of your car. That's why these workers are fighting for a living minimum wage of $15 an hour. Because no one should work 40 hours a week and still be in poverty. But now we've reached that part that affects you. Because even if you're a cold hearted individual who's not concerned about fair pay or sweatshop like conditions. <coughs> <clears throat> you should probably be very concerned about your own safety. For example, there have been complaints that workers have not been given enough time to adequately clean and sanitize inside of planes. Ew. That's disgusting! The same cabins that you as a flyer are exposed to. Hello? In another instance, underpaid cabin cleaners have been tasked with doing security checks on airplanes, something that they're rarely even given the time to complete. By the way, in 2015 alone, airlines ranked in more than, wait for it, $23 billion in profits. In 2014, the CEO of Delta Airlines made $17.6 million, which works out to about $8,460 an hour. Oh, just a little bit more than $15 an hour. Yeah. But listen, we saved the hopeful part for the end. Workers like our friend David Tucker are fighting back. There's an undeniable momentum that cannot be stopped. Airports like Los Angeles's LAX and San Francisco's SFO already guarantee living wages and benefits to their airport workers. We need this to spread nationwide, and we know we can get there. A victory for these workers means justice for them, yes, but it also is a shot in the arm for every other industry that's fighting for better wages and better working conditions. You might even say that this is a movement that's about to uh, take off. Seriously, back to our original question. How the f has this been possible? It's been possible because you didn't know about it, and now you do. So share this video. The more of us that know about this fight, the louder our collective voices will be.